With literally hundreds of games coming out each month, it's hard to separate the asset swaps from the real indie game bangers. Welcome to Get Indie Gaming and in this video, we continue with our monthly top indie games, our hidden gems series this time for December 2019, you might have missed when they first came out. Beginning at number 10 and while recently featured in one of our mainstream videos, we wanted to give Valfaris another chance to shine. Developed by the team who made Slain Back From The Dead, here we have a side-scrolling shooter where you assume the role of a warrior lord hell-bent on eradicating the plague of monsters and nasties who have set upon his ancestors' once divine kingdom. While there have been a number of games such as this out this year, including Blazing Chrome, none have quite matched Valfaris in terms of the overall looks and how darn well it plays. It's also very fluid, particularly the boss and mini-boss battles, and when coupled with the huge array of weaponry at your disposal which can be leveled up, this is everything I've wanted to see in a modern nostalgic side-scroller. It's an unmissable experience for anybody who grew up with these games on heavy rotation in the arcades and earlier consoles. Valfaris launched this past October and can be found on Steam and all of the standard consoles. At number 9, and from the end of July earlier this year, A Thousand Days to Escape, well it sees you given the responsibility and any means necessary to arrange for the rescue of as many humans from Earth as possible, as the planet is due to run out of oxygen in, as the title says, around a thousand days. Despite the heavy nature of the topic, this one's essentially a reasonably light-hearted space simulation and discovery game. One of the things I really like is how little it tells you of what you need to do. It's all very hands-off, which means to get the most of it, you need to experiment and play things at first a tad fast and loose. All in, a thousand days to escape, well it's perhaps not something you're going to come back to too often, although the allure of trying to save humanity does make it an initially enthralling game to while away over the course of an evening. At number 8, and as the saying goes, Stone Story will be proper Marmite with I suspect people either loving it or hating it for various reasons, with the art style being particularly polarising. Stone Story is really an RPG mixed with an auto runner where you're not given full control of the character. What you can do however is shape how it's all put together and in doing so, optimise the character build and loadout and create what's essentially a set of rules or AI for you to get from point A to point B while seeing away the various enemies and bosses that stand in your way. Stone Story came out in early access in August with a full release at a time that's TBA. Up next and at number 7, one of the games I've had the most fun with on Apple Arcade and it's similar to the previous number. While hardly revolutionary, Bleak Sword, with it being a retro-looking classical hack and slash brawler, what it does offer though is a brutal mix of action with some of the most challenging and fun boss battles I've ever played on a mobile platform. Sure, it doesn't look overly pretty, and yet that doesn't matter. The nine levels where you can build your character's abilities as you progress all feel measured with a fine difficulty progression from start to finish. The controls are so simple. You attack, dodge and use your shield by way of swiping or tapping the screen. To dodge, you simply swipe in the direction you want to go. A short tap enables you to parry attacks, while a longer hold and then swiping towards an enemy means you'll attack in that direction. I'm not going to say what this game reminds me of, although to get good at it, you're going to have to be able to recognise enemies' attack styles and intervene accordingly. Oh, and yes, you will die an awful, awful lot. For a game designed for mobiles, well, this is top draw stuff. Up 
now at number 6, The Gardens Between actually came out in September of 2018, with it being a genre mashup of time travelling puzzle game that spins a simple single idea into a glorious 4 hours of playtime. While the control mechanism has you influence each of the characters' actions, you're not responsible for their movement. This sees you take a back seat in the proceedings where you guide them by simply moving time backwards and forwards. By doing so, the characters use their abilities to interact with the beautifully rendered environment. One of them is able to operate switches and to manipulate the aspects of the game to aid in the puzzle-solving progression. The other carries the lamp containing the orb of light which must be delivered to the peak of each level to move on to the next. The majority of the puzzles are simple enough where you observe the cause and effect of items moving during the passing of time. That being said, some do require certain amounts of lateral thinking and a little thought. While wordless, the narrative design is also a real winner with it being easily relatable and having characters and themes that left me honestly wanting a lot, lot more. Next up at number 5, Plunge came out back in August of this year, with it seeing you as the one billionth prisoner of an isometrically designed prison full of traps, monsters and other convicts. It's a simple premise and yet this turn-based strategy roguelite, it beautifully put together art and animation, feels wickedly overlooked. There's puzzle elements here too where you needing to navigate the level which sees you slip and slide your way turn by turn until you strike an object or wall. The game does a great job of signposting potential dangers. It also gives you clear instructions and indications of your health levels and those of enemies around you. While Plunge is available on iOS and Steam, I spent all of my time playing this on the Switch and it feels designed for both quick and long play sessions at home or for me on my commute into the office. Up next from the end of October and out on Steam, the format is clearly recognisable. You're going about a place or an island in this case that's full of forests, swamps and as such along the way you find plenty of nasty enemies and critters that are really quite happy to send you off to the ever after. When you die, you come back into the game at the last camp you visited before setting off once again for more. It's refreshingly sparse in what really is a fighting based exploration type of game that puts me in mind of the recent Ashen and some other games from a generation or two ago. It can be a little hard at times, which will put some people off. The simplistic nature here feels so pleasingly paired back to the basics and this makes it really so very refreshing. Onwards and into the number 3 and out in late May of this year, Smile for me is an unconventional point and click adventure that comes in the unusual guise of this genre of being in the first person. You interact with other characters by literally shaking and nodding your head. And while we were first drawn to Smile For Me for the artwork that exudes class and style, it's the overall writing and characterizations that really make it stand out. While much of the game is spent on what could be called elaborate fetch quests, each of these offers a clever and witty little tale with added puzzle and brief horror moments too. The use of a fortune teller to guide you along in certain areas will be most welcome for some, and while it's a relatively short affair and can be completed in a single playthrough, Smile for me will probably stick with you long after it's done. At number 2 and out late October onto home PC, we have Mo Astray. You play as Mo with you essentially being a rather creepy version of Kirby and Yoshi in terms of the gameplay that's at play here. On looks alone, I expected this to be a Metroidvania and yet nope. It really is an old fashioned platformer. It certainly doesn't have you going back over and over the same areas. That said though, as you progress you do unlock new abilities and having done so, these new skills enable you to again move forwards with the levels adjusting themselves accordingly. Now as you can probably tell, this is quite macabre and gory with the pixel art at work being every much as good in places to the more better known Blasphemous and like that one too, Mo Astray feels a touch bloated in the story elements, with it going just too far into the twiddledom for my personal tastes. Aside from that little gripe, 
The control system is first class, and the core platforming sections feel meaty enough to keep players busy and happy with Mo Astray for a long, long time. Up now at number one, and a game that's only really just come out this late November, and one that's stolen our heart in the last week or so, we have Bug Fables, the everlasting sapling. The game follows the RPG adventures of three creatures within Bulgaria on their quest to find the everlasting sapling, a treasure that's said to grant immortality to those that have it. As others will have already said, I'm sure, Bug Fables really does look as if it's trying to emulate and build upon Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door from, I guess, nearly 20 years ago. And you know what? It gets so very close to pulling off something quite remarkable. All of the Paper Mario aspects seem to be here from the flat 2D models, all within a stunningly well put together 3D background. The combat is also straight out of the Paper Mario playbook, with the button presses and timing fighting scenarios being expertly curated, and with some extra little differences here and there, the fighting is not quite a like-for-like -like copy. Bug Fables is one of those games that's not a clone of the game it's imitating. It's more like a tribute that while poking you from the get-go with its reminiscence of one particular game, but also the platforms from a few good generations ago, it feels and plays and tells a story that is fresh. It's one we enjoyed tremendously, and it's out now via Steam, PlayStation 4, and the Nintendo Switch. So then, which games are you planning on playing in the run-up to the new year? Leave us a comment and let us know what you think about this video or any others on the channel. If you've liked this one, please click like, and if you've not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We usually upload two or three indie game videos a week, and the easiest way to stay up to date is via a subscription, so please click subscribe and also turn on that notification bell. As always, many thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you all here again soon for more indie game videos.